Good day to you. Today with us, we have Suraj Chamaga, who had gone to, from CFL to IIT Bombay. He did his electrical engineering at IIT Bombay and now he's going to Caltech. When Suraj Chamaga came to meet us, and I was so delighted that he's joining Caltech because I'd recently seen the movie Oppenheimer and I'd seen Oppenheimer do his labs and his labs, he had started his particle physics in Caltech and I was over the moon to see that one of our students is joining such a wonderful university. What I want to tell you is, uh, over the years, we've seen CFL students not just well, do well in their exams, they are in the path of excellence and whatever field they're choosing, they're doing their very best. And I'm happy and we are happy at CFL to see Suraj Samaga do the same. Suraj, so congratulations for joining Caltech. I know you're doing, you're going to do your PhD in this thing. I hope you do great things to come. Thank you. So tell us about your experience first in IIT Bombay. Oh well, um, it was the best experience ever for me. Um, four years of engineering, in fact, I just got my degree three days ago. And going back to campus, it was quite nostalgic looking at all the, you know, the spots on campus where I used to hang out and have fun. So I've really grown as a person, I believe, ac academically as well as holistically, because that's what the ITB experience offers you. In terms of academics, like, IIT Bombay really has a great curriculum and it's really helped me improve my critical thinking and like problem solving skills also and I mean I've figured out what my passion is at IIT Bombay by trying out various different things so it gave me an avenue to like research and find out truly what I want to do and that sort of experience is I think something which I really value Apart from that, the fabulous peer group that I benefited from there. I mean, I looked at my left and right and there were these like ultra smart kids who were like... It was really amazing to just some, sometimes just sit back and like look at them and just wonder at their thought processes and the way they think and... Uh, so for me, it was just an awesome learning experience all in all. The peer group and the faculty as well, some of the uh, professors I interacted with they're really doing cutting-edge research in their own fields and it, it was really an amazing experience sitting in those lecture halls of IIT Bombay being taught by luminaries in the field and I mean not just academics, I've had good experiences um, outside academics as well I was part of the college um, aquatics team yeah. and I represented um, IIT Bombay in swimming and water polo in intra and inter college events which was a blast and then there are these fests that all of you have heard of. I mean, Moore and Bigo, Tech Fest, awesome experiences. Um, yeah, all in all, the city as well, Mumbai, it's a city very close to my heart. I was born in Mumbai. Um, I stayed there for 13 years and it was good going back. And yeah, I mean, would I do it all again? <laughs> Definitely. So, Suraj, your batch was one of the most memorable batches we had. So, just tell us where your friends are right now. Sure, I mean, yeah. <laughs> My friends are all over the place, quite literally. Um, Shreyas Pai is at uh, is at Harvard pursuing his PhD in biology, yeah. evolutionary biology. Yes. Then um, we have um, um, Ankush Moger who was at IISC pursuing math. Shravan Singh Mehra was also at IISC pursuing math again. I think we have a lot of pure science Absolutely, enthusiasts yes. in our batch. Um, then there was Anish Hebbar um, who was very good at Olympiad Math from yes. what I remember and came back recently as well yes. exactly and yeah. um, he joined ISC Math and now he's uh, he joined Dukes yes. uh, to pursue his um, PhD in CS theoretical CS then we have Bio guy we have Vishnu who's doing uh, um, yeah. uh, studying at KMC yes. Manipal then we have a few other people who, who are doing engineering we have Vignesh who's doing uh, a CS engineering at um, IIT Guwahati. Yeah. We had a few people at Bits as well, Rahul Balike, Akash Revankar. Yeah. They're both at Bits Pilani doing E and C S respectively. And I can go on and on. Yeah, I know. So uh, one of, we wanted to tell you, right? We have always had CFL, right? When we talk about peer groups, we take your batch as your, you know, as an example. Because how you each other helped each other with the various subjects you had. So you've been a role model and thank you guys for being a role model. Tell us about Caltech. Why Caltech, Kapoor? Well, so my journey of applying for graduate school is very interesting. I was initially of the thought process of applying just for master's programs. 
but then i sort of thought about it and applied to phd programs but my qualms about phd was like i really need to fit in with the group with the advisor because a phd is a long commitment and yeah. which is why i was um, i researched a lot about um, universities and i only applied to two universities for phd berkeley and caltech because the groups there are doing really interesting stuff and related to what i am doing right now so there was this group at caltech headed by professor ali ajmeri which i applied to they like do really awesome work and so i applied to two uh, phd programs and seven masters programs in electrical engineering and yeah so mostly while shortlisting it was looking at the research of the uh, group and seeing if it aligns with my own interests and seeing if essentially i can work there for 5 or 6 years or whatever it takes to get my phd so uh, suraj uh, this is a question i have to ask you for the benefit of the parents there and the students listening to you uh, when it comes to electrical engineering people generally want to look at when they're looking at joining any uh, engineering they are looking at cs enc and then they are all vague about it right you uh, you know and i i know pretty much now every engineering is getting inter- interconnected right there's electrical engineering in everything right now correct and there is cs in everything as well as right now correct how do you see electrical engineering you know expanding in the world that's coming about Right. Thanks for the question. I think that's a very important thing to address because right now you have brand streams like AIDS and yeah. uh, all you know subsidiary streams of CS and AI, and that's sort of the in thing right now. But it's important to realize that um, if you pick up like let's say CS and data science, which is uh, seems to be in in popular demand right now, if you really need to um, carry out all of these machine learning computations or um, other things, you really need to have you really need to be backed by efficient hardware and that comes from electrical engineering another example could be the recent success of our um, our own isro at um, reaching the moon yeah i mean such achievements really need you to have efficient communication systems and you really need to be able to control your rover f- sitting back from here yeah and that sort of communication again needs electrical engineering the internet that you access whenever you have any any like doubt or question you just open your phone and you look up something yeah i mean all of that is possible only through wifi or Absolutely. internet and that is again electrical engineering so electrical engineering is really embedded into our lives and don't know where we would be without it and that sort of true to some extent about all engineering fields not just electrical engineering talk about material science well you need materials you need to know what uh, materials are there and what better materials you can achieve to really go to into the next frontier of science for example you might have heard about this, the superconductor discovery recently about the lk anti anti material it was it was found to not be a superconductor but unless you really research about these things there's no step there's no way to bridge that gap into the next era of science uh, if you only doing cs yeah. you need to have all sorts of sub engineers in the world there are students who are right now you've gone through the whole process right now you've gone to 11th and 12th you did all the exams and you pretty much got into all the subject all the colleges what would be your advice to the students who are in 9th 10th 11th 12th right now so for me while preparation i always looked at i never wanted to prepare with the intention of getting into a college or getting into the iit my focus was just that so i joined cfl in class 10 and the first thing i enrolled for was the olympiad class and uh, and and really sitting through that really made me fall in love with mathematics and similarly in 11th and 12th that's why i fell in love with other sciences as well so for me the journey of class 10 11 12 was a pursuit of science yeah and i was really enjoying what i was doing and that's why i did it i mean majority of my 11th and 12th i spent the first half of 11th preparing for the math olympiad yeah the second the, the second half of 11th and 12th preparing for the chemistry olympiad so for me preparation was never really tied to an exam i studied for the sake of it and i think that's the best motivation that one can have all of, all the people in my peer group to take the example of shreyas who really did awesome things in biology he was motivated by his own innate desire to like want to know more in whatever he's studying and with that sort of mindset it really becomes easy for you to study longer hours or whatever the conventional wisdom tells you to do 
So Shreyas, you've seen a lot of students from coming to IIT Bombay from around the country. And if you had to do it all over again, how would you do it? Well, I mean, I, that's a tough question to answer, but um, I think the common thing that I've observed across my batchmates is their own hard work. And I think this goes true in all sorts of pep self preparation. The ratio of like your, your hard work is to your coachings is usually in my by my opinion like four is to one. Okay. It's always like, self-driven. It's your work. Like no matter what coaching you go to. A coaching's job is just to get you access to resources and get you in a good environment with a good peer group. That's about it. The rest of it, preparation, planning things out, all of that is your uh, the onus is on you. And that's what I observed at least with my batchmates that they were really self-driven and self-motivated people and I wouldn't really change much in my coaching. Maybe I would plan better, of course, now in retrospect, yeah, I think that if I had maybe prepared evenly across subjects, I would have done better. But again, like I studied as much as I could and I studied because I wanted to and I wouldn't really change any of that. Okay. Uh Let's say, I don't know if you have a younger brother or sister, do you? I do have a younger brother. Yeah, how old is he? He's in 10th grade right now. Okay, what is your advice to him? I, this is like, again like something I always tell him that don't study for the sake of exams, just study what you like and because doing that is the best way to really like excel. Okay. We were just discussing about excellence and yeah. that's how, that's where it comes from. Like when you really study for the sake of it and not just to clear an exam that's when you really reach those top levels of what we're talking about. So, yeah, just to give you a perspective on what we're talking about here, is that a lot of students and a lot of uh, parents uh, give a reward when the students have got a result. And that's for a student is when the dopamine release happens. And uh, from the work that we're giving at the growth mindset is, if you reward effort, and you're putting effort every day, right? And then if you're rewarding effort, then you're getting a dopamine release every single day. And then every single day is a pleasurable day. And that's what we've seen in students who are really working hard is because they are rewarding hard work. And that's why they're getting a dopamine release every single day. And that's why they're happier. And that's what we want our students to do, you know, have a be happy every single day. Um, um, your uh, example, Bridge. Uh, is the example that we want to give to the parents. You know, we want our students to reach the path of excellence. Uh, we want Suraj people, uh, like students like Suraj, to be the, you know, the poster boys of CFL. So thank you, Suraj, and I am grateful for being an excellent student. And I, I'm, you know, and all the teachers at CFL and all the students who are coming to CFL see you as a role model. So thank you for being that. Thank you for having me here. Thank you.